This is the fifth time I'm making this video because I'm getting really emotional, but I'm just going to read you what Mero says. So the question is, hey Mark, I know that you probably won't answer this, but I really wanted you to pass this along if possible. Double Masters, while being a cool set, is priced out of my range. While you don't control pricing, I just wanted you to know that $300 a box is going to really spoil a lot of the community's goodwill towards your company. I know that company's line is it's not for everyone, but Mr. Rosewater, it's a bridge too far for this 15-year invested Magic player. Mark responds, I want to have an honest discussion with all of you. While making Magic the best game it can be, is important to us, we are also a business. Part of our job as a business is to recognize all the various audiences and create products to serve them. That's how we make money. Finding player desires and filling them with products. One of our audiences are invested players with a higher price threshold. That is, there are players who are willing, willing to spend a lot of money for highly desired cards, be it reprints or alternative versions. It is in our best, our interest to make products for those players. Things like Double Masters and Collector's Boosters. Note that we take great care to make those products something that group is happy to buy. The issue those desirable cards are also desired the issue is those desirable cards are also desired by players who that product is not aimed for. Desirable cards are desired desirable cards. So when we make these products, that group gets upset because the price seems so high. It feels like an insult. We made something they like, but we priced them out of being able to purchase it. I get the ill will, but I also feel like not making products for that audience is unfair for both that audience and us. So I'm turning to all of you that feel upset. How can we make these products in a way that allows that audience to get what they want without all of you feeling like we're doing harm to you? This is how I'm going to begin the video, and now I'm going to offer a solution. But before I give you the solution, I do want to say that there are two kind of schools in this. Tolarian Community College recently made a video, and he is of the mindset that this should be a cheaper product, and more they can print more of the product, and that's how they're going to make money, is they're going to print more of it, more people will buy it, and therefore it becomes instead of $16 a booster pack, it will be $8 a booster pack. There'll just be more of it. So Wizard of Coast will make the same amount of money, but there will be more happy players because there are people who can afford this now. Rudy says, Alpha Investments made a video which has a lot of dislikes on it compared to his normal videos that, hey, the marketplace is the marketplace. People are willing to pay $300 for this. People are willing to pay more whatever someone's willing to pay is whatever it is worth. Now, to understand the solution, you will have to understand that I believe in Tolarian Community College is the idealist and Rudy is the realist. That means that you can meet in the middle. So my solution is exactly in the middle. When I talked about the masterpieces, I talked about them very... I did not like them. But that makes it fair. I play a lot of gotcha games. And the one thing that makes gotcha, you know, some people spend thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars pulling for a character. And they may not get it because of variance and because of luck. And then a brand new player who's never played a game before can log in and click on some buttons and bam, they get the new character. Every gotcha game and mobile is exactly what I described. It is quite possible no matter how much money you spend, you don't get the card you want in a gotcha or you don't get the character you want in a gotcha game. 
and it is possible that a brand new player who has no understanding of this character's significance gets it on their first try because it is odd. Now, of course, as any mathematician can tell you, if you spend enough money, yeah, you will get there, which is what whales do. The masterpieces is the solution. Have the best cards be available in the cheapest boxes possible. And the way that you're going to make more money is people will buy more boxes. This will reduce the price of singles. Battle for Zendikar had the lowest standard decks of all time. Because really rich whales didn't have a collector's edition to buy. They were forced to buy the standard boxes, which then cratered the price. There was not like any card even above $10. I think Gideon was the only one above $10 for a long time. And he was an amazing planeswalker. And that is the solution. If you want whales to support the newer players or the players who don't have as much money, give them the same potential. A new, brand new player can pull a masterpiece, just like a whale. But a whale is going to buy much more, much more pl- product and flood the market with product, therefore reducing the price of singles, making paper standard affordable. And a whale gets what they want. They get the thrill of the hunt, if you will. The collector's edition is absolutely not the way to go. Because the collector's edition does something really, really bad. It segregates. Segregation, in terms of history, has never been really a good concept. It's been one of the most historically backwards concepts I can imagine. Uh, segregation between races, segregation between income, segregation between certain demographics. Many of you probably don't expect me to say something like that, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. That when you segregate people based by income, here, here here's a rich person booster box. Here's a rich person product. And here are the poor people products who, you know, they're just less good cards in them, to be quite frank. No, you need everyone to have an equal shot. Now, the rich person can buy more booster boxes. They can buy more gems, crystals, coins, whatever. They need to play the gotcha game, which Magic the Gathering definitely is, right? You're pulling for that one card out of 200 of the whole set that you actually want. And that is my simple solution. It's not hard. It's not difficult. It's very, very simple. Bye, guys.